Hi, let's explore soul contracts. Now, at this time of the year, we're all getting ready to finalize some of the old things that we've been doing and start to make some change so that we can move forward and create something better with our lives. Now, with the work that I do, um, we all, you know, a lot of work I do is to do with people's relationships and um, with their upbringing and all the rest of it. But you see, everything is so much deeper than you're probably even aware of. Now, as souls, we find that we, we have these different soul groups. So before we come down, we, we find that um, we, we're looking for our purpose. Now, through the work that I do with age regression, for, for example, and um, informing souls technique, what we find is that we can go right back to before a life. And sometimes my clients will go back spontaneously when we're looking for the cause of some of our issues. It might be anxiety, it might be uh, fear of confrontation, it might be forgiveness or whatever that they, they need to work on, anger issues or whatever. And what we find is that if they go back into that, that area between lives, whether you agree with this or believe in this or not, hear me out because it all fits in, into place and it all makes a lot of sense. And I've had so many, I've had hundreds of clients go there and all come up with pretty much the same information. So it, it's a real blessing to be able to witness this with my clients. But what we find is that probably 80% of, of people tell me that they choose their, their purpose and the lessons they're here to learn. 10% uh, say um, it's allotted to me and the other 10% would probably say it's a joint decision between me and, and my guides or angels or, or higher higher knowledge, higher other beings um, that make that decision as to what we're coming in to learn and the experiences that we're coming in to have in this lifetime. Now there's no real judgment of good or bad. In one life you might be a murderer and in the next life you might be murdered. But that is the soul's journey is really about having that experience of all it is to be human so that we can, um, we can grow and we can evolve as spiritual beings. Now, um, I have quite a few clients that have had difficult relationships with parents and with children. And what we tend to find is one parent might be really strict and tough and then if they're really a disciplinarian and a controller and perfectionist, the next generation, the next child will have a lot of anxiety, they might be people pleasers and um, they're trying to avoid a confrontation so they give in, they don't have strong boundaries. And what they tend to do then is breed children that um, that have learnt from seeing, um, they go into relationships firstly with people that mirror back their issues from their, their childhood. So they might draw somebody that's abusive into their life because they had a lot of abuse as a child. And then what they'll tend to do is they'll have children that will treat them the same way that may be abusive or narcissistic because they've watched that that's how dad got his own way or mum got her own way or whatever that might be. So we tend to repeat those sins of the father as they say, but what we're really doing is just repeating patterns and um, training people how to treat us by the things we let, let them get away with. Now, when we look at it from the soul perspective, we realize that that one soul that might have um, been born into a family where they may not have, um, they may have had seen a lot of abuse or they may have had some abuse. So they had a fear of confrontation. They never learned to put boundaries in place. They never learned to stand up for themselves and say no. And then they've drawn somebody into their life um, that has been abusive. Now, the reason that person they've drawn them in is not because they're trying to hurt them, but before they've come down, this person in their soul group, because we come back in different groups, the person in that group has said, you know, what are you coming in to learn? You want to learn forgiveness or you want to learn to stand up for yourself. Look, I love you so much as a soul. I'm going to volunteer to be the biggest bastard to you in this next life. I'm going to hurt you every way I can till you learn to love yourself and stand up to me and put me in place and put a strong boundary in place and stop me. So it means that that's it's come out of love because that's what we've signed up for. We want to learn how to stand up for ourselves and how to say no and how to love ourselves. And the only way we can do that is we're going to have to forgive that person. We're going to have to uh, stand up to them and choose that self-respect rather than letting them get away with it any longer and put a really strong boundary in place. Now, when I do work with my clients to teach them how to say no and how to put boundaries in place, 
their relationships will change. Now, firstly, that person they're in the relationship with may try to pull them back down and put them back in that box where it's been familiar. And secondly, that person might say, you know what, I love you so much. I'm gonna step up, I'm gonna do the work for myself to become the best version of me that I can be so that I can have you in my life. The next thing that might happen is that person may say, too hard, I can't do the work, I'm gonna leave. Or you might say, I'm not tolerating bad behavior and if you can't step up, you can step off, you might leave. Now, when we kind of look at it um, from the subconscious level, we realize the subconscious really is that connection to the soul and it's trying to help us. When we are born into a, um, a dysfunctional family, a troubled family, uh, and we grow up with that, when we're looking for love, the interesting thing is the conscious mind's version of love is everything that's beautiful, everything that's wholesome and, and, and whole and loving and kind. However, to the subconscious mind, the word love equals what is familiar. So we find that we can repeat the patterns and draw familiar experiences, familiar feelings into our life. Even though on a conscious level, we don't want that. On the subconscious level, we're trying to bring back what is familiar so that we can heal it, so that we can overcome it and step over it and kick it to the curb and find our true version of ourself, our best self. So when we look at the subconscious mind, we know the first seven years set us up and that is called the imprint period. And it means basically that we are in hypnosis for those first seven years of our life. We're in the same brainwave pattern. And when we're in that same brainwave pattern, it determines our core belief about ourself and what we feel we deserve, what we're willing to put up with. Now, if we've had, um, for example, a mother who has um, been through that dysfunctional family and she's married somebody that's been abusive, even though by the time we get older, we may not even see that because dad might have made those changes and done the work on himself. But if we see a mother being constantly put down and abused and she doesn't stand up for herself, then as children, we're gonna learn the pattern. We're gonna be either exactly the same and turn out to be people pleasers or we're gonna become the abuser because it's worked for dad, so maybe it's gonna work for us too. And we'll become narcissistic or controlling or manipulative as a way to get our own emotional needs met. Now, hopefully, if we've been through that path, we will recognize that that's not who we wanna be, that's not really what we wanna do. And if we are the ones that are abusive and narcissistic, then our soul lesson is about overcoming that so that we can we can recognize that that's not our true self. And we can then move through forgiveness of others, but move through forgiveness of ourselves as well. We need to forgive the people that implanted that pattern. And that might be in the case of the story I've just told you, it may be the father we need to forgive, but it may also be the mother we need to forgive because she let that go on. She let that abuse happen in front of us, which trained us that we weren't worthy either. So have a little think about your patterns and where you know, where you fit into the scheme of things because a pattern will keep presenting itself and the pain will keep presenting itself till we have enough pain that we wanna make a change. And we find we didn't come here to be horrible people. We didn't come here to be walked all over. We've come here to find our own path to love ourselves, regardless of what anybody else thinks. Now, sometimes that path is very lonely, but we cannot tolerate bad behavior simply as a way to, um, to have somebody else in our life. We've got to put a boundary in place that's going to serve us. And what we find is when we love ourselves, we let go of all our old patterns and um, we let go of addictions, for example. We let go of, um, of, and addictions can be anything. It might be drugs and alcohol, it might be food, it might be um, cleaning, it might be turning into a workaholic, it might be gambling, but they are all ways that we deal with our emotions by not dealing with them. Now, since we're talking soul stuff, what we also find is that we can take on addictive behaviors like drugs, alcohol, gambling, and all of those things. And what that can also do, if, if particularly if we choose drugs or alcohol as our, our poison and our way to distract from anxieties and fears and angers, we'll find that those things can then put a hole in our aura. And our aura is our energetic boundary around us. And when there are holes in the aura, then things can get in. We can have attachments, we can have 
negative energies and entities that can attach and change the way that we show up in the world. And what we'll find is that people that have attachments, sometimes dark attachments, they can have, they can have taken those on in those early years, maybe from another parent, for example, um, but also then when we go down that path of addiction, trying to self-medicate, we're actually opening the door for things to attach. So I know that's kind of heavy duty stuff for, to be talking about, but I want you to realize we are more than just these bodies. We are souls in these bodies. And our lifetime journey is not about hurting ourselves. It's about overcoming the pain and overcoming the obstacles of the past so that we can love ourselves and step into the present moment, release and let go of what does not serve us and move forward and create something better. So what I'd like you to do is take some time and look at the patterns that you've got in your life, mainly in relationships, so work and home are the main big areas of our life where we're learning patterns and letting them be reinforced. And you know, if, you're, if I've got a client that comes in and says, I've been bullied at work, in my mind I go, somebody in your family bullied you. Maybe you had a perfectionist or a critical parent and that made you then feel, feel not good enough. So you got defensive and you took things personally. And it, again, it's a pattern that just repeats till it doesn't. Patterns will continue to repeat themselves. Lessons will be continued to be um, presented to us till we learn the lesson, till we overcome that obstacle and choose something better for ourselves. So lots of stuff there for you guys to think about today. So take the time and look, about, look at your patterns. Think about the areas you want to work on and start to make the unconscious conscious so that everything becomes a choice. Will you be a people pleaser? Will you continue to try to fix everybody that does not want to be fixed or is not ready to be fixed? Or will you, um, will you continue to distract yourself with addictive behaviors or patterns or substances as a way to avoid dealing with your stuff, remembering that everything becomes a layer and that layer gets bigger and bigger till we explode. So every little thing that triggers you now is really an opportunity to heal stuff from your past. And when you own it, when you're ready to deal with it and let it go, then it no longer has the power over you. You see, as I was saying, the first seven years of your life, you are basically in hypnosis. And you're living in that subconscious part of the, the pattern of the brain, that brainwave pattern. After that, a layer builds up between the conscious and subconscious and it's called the critical faculty. Now, then everything that comes in that backs up your core belief about your self-worth, what you're willing to put up with, if more information comes in that agrees with it, that gate opens. If information comes in that does not agree with that, the gate will slam shut and you'll say, I really wish I was good enough. I really wish I could believe that stuff, but nothing else has worked, so I can't trust it. So we go with, through our life with these blinkers on and we only tend to see the things that match that core belief. And that is because uh, it's 90 to 95% that subconscious mind, it's like the bottom of the iceberg. And um, that, that subconscious mind is below the surface. The conscious and subconscious parts of the brain, they don't talk to each other. Conscious mind is 90 to 95%, um, sorry, the conscious mind is five to 10% of your mind. The subconscious is 90 to 95%. The conscious mind is basically, and hold on for a second, it's kind of like, and this is a, this is a toy, but, the conscious mind is really, the left hemisphere of the brain is mainly controlling the conscious and it's analytical and it makes sense and it's rational and it wants to explain everything, but it's five to 10%. The subconscious mind is like the right side of the brain and it is, the, the subconscious is creative and it's emotional and it's where our habits lie and our patterns lie. And it's 90 to 95%. So five to 10% is never gonna beat that 90 to 95%. However, in the middle, we've got what we call the amygdala and that is basically our fight, flight or freeze center. So as you go through your day being triggered, fight, flight, freeze, fight, flight, freeze. And eventually, if you've got lots and lots of years of trauma and triggers, it kind of gets stuck. So when we do advanced techniques like five path hypnosis, we're using techniques that are gonna pull those little triggers out and toss them away and you come back to reset that subconscious mind so that it only goes on alert when it really needs to and you come back into recovery 
from all the trauma, letting it go, moving on and creating a much better life. So I just love this work because we get a chance to really find out what's really causing the problem rather than just trying to band-aid with that five to ten percent we want to dig deep we want to clear the crap out so that you are free to live your best life so it's not just subconscious conscious it's the soul work as well that we need to do to really clear the crap out of your head and out of your life remember our our main aim is to find peace and to find happiness and to find joy and to express all that we are coming here in this lifetime to be. No two souls are the same. No two people are the same. We all have different experiences and a whole set of different things that set us up to be born with like a single fingerprint. Absolutely unique. And you too are as unique as your fingerprint. And a fingerprint cannot help but be perfect in its own uniqueness. So know that all of the things that set you up to be born at the exact time when you were meant to be born to give you that star sign so that it will give you those personality traits that will give you the, the parents that you're meant to have. All of that is set up for you to heal your life, to overcome all those baseline things that were planted in those early years and, and just step up and, and light up the world with your, your energy, with your light. You are here to give the gift that you are back to the world. And the best way to do that is do the work, heal yourself, move on and create something better for yourself, knowing that it's going to have a ripple effect that will spread out to change lives that you've never even met yet. So have a beautiful day, everyone. This is Carol McRae, Mind, Body, Magic in Dubbo. Don't forget, we also do, um, we do work online so we can use FaceTime, we can use Skype, we can use uh, Messenger, we can use um, Zoom. There's no limit to what we can do um, through the power of the modern technology. So don't let COVID or time or anything else limit you. There's no excuse. Make this next year the best year of your life by doing the work to start fresh to be who you're meant to be. So have a beautiful day, everyone, and I will talk to you all soon. If you've got any questions, feel free just to jot them down below this video because I love how this stuff works and I love sharing knowledge and information. And if anybody wants to make a booking, you can call me on 041-334-6637 or just, just book it online because I've got a booking service online now and that's just www.carolmccrae.com. So have a great day guys and um, as I said, Merry Christmas for recently and Happy New Year for 2022. Let's make it awesome. We've been through lots and lots of stuff and everything is just an opportunity to step up and overcome. Nothing is meant to hurt us. Everything is meant to grow our soul. So enjoy everyone and Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, Namaste. And let me know if I can ever help in any way.